صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرأوا إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانه وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وتقربوا إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالاتي وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب أثاركم مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبته مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إنا يوم عاشوراء يوم تبركت به بنو أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم العن أبا سفيان 
ومعاوية ويزيد بن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين ويوم عاشوراء يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العن مئة مرة أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين عليه السلام وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد اللهم خص أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم العن الثانية والثالثة والرابع اللهم العن يزيد خامسا والعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانة وعمر بن ساعد وشمرا وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة سجود اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الأول قبل الإنشاء والإحياء والآخر بعد فناء الأشياء العليم الذي لا ينسى من ذكره ولا ينقص من شكره اللهم صلي وسلم وزد وبارك على عبدك ورسولك وحبيبك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أجمعين 
لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام على أبي الفضل العباس السلام على قلب زينب الصبور صل على محمد وآل محمد Tonight is the ninth night of the holy month of Muharram and we thank Allah for the blessing of having been able to over these nights and tonight remember the tragedy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the tragedy of Karbala and learn lessons, great lessons from this great man and his family and what happened in Karbala. <coughs> so far we've been speaking about the issue of the fact that we all have a destiny and a purpose and that our destiny and purpose is to be the Khalifa of Allah on earth to be Allah's representative to be Allah's vicegerent on earth and to carry out God's will on on earth in this realm of existence and we said that as part of this last night we spoke about the issue of tests and we said that we're going to be trialed and tested this is part of how we grow this is part of how we come to know about ourselves. And we spoke about how to re respond to these tests, in particular to make sure that we always adhere to taqwa, that whatever difficulty we face, whatever test, we always make the decision that is in line and consistent with taqwa. And at the beginning of our series, we spoke about developing ourselves. We said that once we know that we have a destiny and a purpose, we have to work hard to develop ourselves to reach our own purpose and destiny and potential in this world. And we said that it takes time and hard work and we gave examples like that of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how hard they worked, the time they had to put in and the efforts that they had to put in. And last night we spoke about tests and trials and these tests and trials they're a part of this process of developing ourselves, the way we respond to them. Sometimes having one hardship in your life that you respond to in the correct way with taqwa can sometimes be better than thousands of mustahab prayers, can be better than years of studying, right? It can bring about results, it can bring about successes and development of your soul much more than other things can. And so we've got two things left inshallah to speak about. One is knowledge. And the other is spiritual growth, right? Um, sp advancing and developing ourselves spiritually. So we'll start with knowledge, inshaAllah. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So knowledge is very important when it comes to when we want to come and to develop our souls and to improve and to meet our destiny and our purpose. And we've had, you know, on our Tuesday night programs for the brothers, we've had oh, sessions just on each of these topics. So inshallah, you can refer to those. But knowledge is a huge part of developing ourselves, gaining knowledge, right? Attending school to learn the, you know, the, what we call the secular knowledge, like learning maths, learning how to read and write and appreciate literature, learning about the science and how the world works, as well as learning the Islamic sciences, right? Like theology and, and what, what the reality of the world is, where do I come from, where am I going? All of this is very important. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ Whatever state that we are in, it is wajib, it's obligatory on us to be seeking knowledge. And in another hadith, he says that when a person is engaged in this process of seeking knowledge, Allah is so happy with this person that يَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Everything in existence is asking forgiveness for this person because they're engaged in this process of gaining and attaining knowledge. Even the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky are doing istighfar for this person because they are on this path of seeking knowledge. This is something that Islam emphasizes on so much. Gain knowledge, gain knowledge about the world, knowledge about within Islam. As long as it's beneficial knowledge and you're trying to gain it for sincere reasons, then everything in this world is going to be on your side. Everything is going to be doing istighfar for you. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, 
This is Allama Tabatabai. He's one of the great spiritual scholars of our time. He passed away about, I think, 30 or 40 years ago. This man was amazing. The books that he wrote in, in you know, his Tafsir al Mizan has inspired so many people, has led to people understanding Quran in a way that they never understood it before. So many organizations and institutions have been made just to read and study this book that he wrote. Right? And beyond his knowledge, he was an incredible man in, the, in his spirituality, in akhlaq. Books you know, of, written about him, if you can. There are many books for teenagers, for adults, about the life of this person in English. Please try to get one of these books and to read about it. There are so many lessons from the life of this man. But tonight, just one quick lesson from Allah Ta'ala. Ta he says that while I was studying in the Hawza, you know, he spent 10 or 12 years in Najaf before he went back to Iran. He says that I would stay up all night in summer and spring, which is the longest, sorry, the shorter nights, right? He would stay, he, say, he says, I would stay up all night studying to the extent that like the sun would rise. After Fajr, the sun would rise and I'm still reading my books. I'm getting ready for my class tomorrow. I want to go to my class in the Hawza or he even actually studied other sciences as well. I want to be ready for my class. He would stay up all night studying. This is how he became Allama Tabatabai. He didn't just, you know, click a finger and Allah sent, you know, sent knowledge into his heart. Yes, some knowledge we gain like that, and we'll talk about this, but he worked very hard. He, he spent his time gaining knowledge. So for all the young people here and for all the old people here, this is an example for us, that if I want to succeed and I want to develop myself and I want to reach that destination, that destiny, that purpose, that p fully realize my potential, knowledge is a really important part. Knowledge of the world, knowledge of Islam, knowledge of the sciences, whatever it is that's beneficial for me or for humanity. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So hopefully this encourages us all, inshallah, that one thing we take from tonight is that we give a little bit more attention to gaining beneficial knowledge. Okay, the big thing that we're going to talk about tonight, though, is spiritual growth, spiritual purification. So sometimes I develop through reading books and I learn, uh, I learn what, what, what I, you know, what's halal, what's haram. I learn about why Allah created the world and what the Day of Judgment is going to be like. And all of this is very, very important, right? And... But at the same time, and more important than this, and what the Prophet ﷺ was sent was to teach us, to read to us the Quran so we can learn it and, you know, and, and, you know just study it. But at the same time, we use a kihim to purify ourselves spiritually as well. So inshallah, this is the main thing that we're going to talk about tonight. This is very, very important. So even if you've come here because your parents made you come tonight, Bear with me, I'll try and make it as interesting for you as possible, inshallah. But this is very, very important that we understand what we're talking about when we're talking about spiritual purification. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when we talk about spiritual purification, we're talking about the soul. So I have a body and then I have a soul. Now my body is important. Allah created my body in a perfect way for me to enjoy the world. But my soul is so much more amazing. Because animals also have bodies and they're created in the perfect way for them to do what they need to do. Right? A fish is created perfectly to be able to swim and do what it needs to do in the water. A bird is created perfectly to fly and humans are created perfectly to do what they need to do. But my soul is a, an entire other level of incredible creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's describing how he creates the humankind. We made him a small seed in a firm resting place. Then we made him into a clot and then the clot into a lump of flesh. And then we made in the lump of flesh bones and then we clothed the bones with flesh. Then we caused it to grow into another creation. ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر. After Allah created my body, he then gave me something else. A different type of creation altogether. Different to what animals might have. Different to what plants might have. And I'm also different to the jinn and the angels. He gave me something. 
right? ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. See Allah here, He says He's the best of creator when He creates. Not, not that there's a lot of creators, that He's the best creator imaginable, right? He speaks about it when He's speaking about the soul. Okay, when He speaks to the angels. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَإٍ مَسْنُونٍ I am creating a human, Bashar, out of dry clay from an aging mud. They're speaking about the physical creation of humankind, the cells and the DNA and all that that goes into the physical body. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ Once I've created him and put, him in, put everything in perfect proportion, you know, the eyes are where they're meant to be, the nose is where it's meant to be, everything looks nice and the heart and the lung are all functioning the way that they're supposed to function. وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي Then I breathed into him of my spirit. Now this ayah is difficult to understand because Allah is not spiritual. He's not physical or spiritual. But there is something that Allah gives us that he calls the ruh or the nafs. That is just a whole other incredible level of creation. That we know about because we experience it every moment of our lives, but also we don't know about fully because it's it's something beyond. It's as you know, as the Quran says, "Hada min amri rabbi." This is from the command of my Lord. I cannot understand it fully, but I know that I have this ruh, this soul. If I ask any of you here, do you have a soul, something different to your body? You say yes, but to prove it to someone else can be very hard. But we all know that we have this soul. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by this soul. He, here he gives, Allah gives 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 oaths. He swears by 9 things before he then at the end of it swears by the nafs, the soul. This shows you one, how important it is, how amazing it is. Two, there's nowhere else in the Quran where Allah takes an oath 9 times before he gets to the point that he's trying to make. And thirdly, the thing that he takes an oath by is himself. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا The sun and when it, it shines its brightness in the duha, in the middle of the morning. وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And the moon that comes after the sun at night. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا And by the heavens and the one who created them. Who, did, who created them? Allah. And by the earth and the one who made it spread out so you can enjoy it and walk on it and plant on it. Allah. He swears by himself twice and then he comes and he swears by the soul. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا The soul and the one who created it and fashioned it. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And he inspired in the soul what would make it corrupt and what would make it pure. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. The successful one is the one who purifies their soul. Wa qad khaba man dasaha. And the one who doesn't care about it, this is the real loser. So, the soul is very special, right? It's a very, very special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is perhaps the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the intellect that I have. It is the willpower that I have. And nothing else, no other creature has intellect and willpower the way that we humans have. No angel, no jinn, no animal. Nothing in existence has this. So Allah has given me this opportunity to be the best of the best, the most elevated but I then have to make that choice. Am I going to purify this soul and use it to its full potential? Or am I going to corrupt it and let it go to waste? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So what's the relation of the soul to the body? This is very important to understand. We have a body, our jasad, our badan, which is material. And we have our soul, our nafs or our ruh. 
one of the ways that we can try to explain the soul to someone is, look, your body is divisible. If you, you have an arm, you have a leg, you say, this is part of my body, this is part of my body. And if you were to lose that part of your body, a part of your body is gone. Your body was divided, right? You say, I lost my arm, or I lost my, inshallah, never happens to anyone. I lost my leg, I lost my finger. But your soul, it's indivisible. You can't say, you know, me, like, you know, you say, this is me. I am, for example, whoever I am. That's not divisible. That's just, that's your identity. You could lose your arm, you could lose your finger, you could use your leg. You could, you know, your cells regenerate every seven years. You know, scientists tell us that no cells in your body are the same from one decade, uh, you know, from one time in your life to a decade later. But it's still you. This indivisible thing that you have, it's indivisible because it's not material, it's not physical. And it's what makes you, you. It's what makes you who you are. It's your essence. It will survive after your body dies even. And it will be rejoined to your body when we are resurrected on the day of judgment. So, tonight we're going to, we've sort of touched a little bit about the soul and that it is the, it is me, it's the reality of who I am and it is the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something very, very special that Allah has given to me so that I can look after it, so that I can purify it. So tonight we're going to talk about this. So the first ayah we're going to talk about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Let every human being examine their food. Before you eat something, think about it, right? Now, this could mean, think about the incredible miracle that, how did this apple get to you? You know, there were so many steps. So many things had to go right. So many things had to be perfect for you to have this apple and be able to eat it and enjoy it. Another one could be that, look, is it, is it halal or haram to eat? Is the money that I bought it with halal or haram? All of these things. But Imam Baqar salam takes it one step further. He says, when I asked him about this ayah, this one of the, Companions of Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam. He says, when Allah, One of the meanings of this ayah, one of the applications of this ayah is that where am I taking my knowledge from? And I want to extend this to beyond knowledge and our scholars have extended this to beyond knowledge. Anything that you allow your senses to experience, any music that you listen to, any song that you hear, any speaker that you listening to them speak, for example, if you are, you know, flicking through your Instagram and there's someone talking and you're paying attention to this person and listening to what they say. Any picture that you see, for example, again, as you're scrolling through your TikTok and your Snapchat, anything that you listen to, anything that you see, all of this, all of this falls under this ayah. Be careful. Be very, very careful. Please, Please be careful. Just like if I, if, I, if I asked you that after the majlis tonight, I am go there's going to be one box of fresh, nice, uh, beautiful, you know, timmanu qima, and on the other hand, there is like a, a box of rotten fruit that has been sitting in the fridge for two weeks. And I say, which one will you choose? No one's going to choose that, that, that rotten fruit. Even if someone was trying to force feed you, you would say no. But yet we go and we sometimes seek out stuff that rots our soul. Absolutely rots our soul. I spend hours flicking through these people who are just talking complete gibberish, nonsense, nonsense. These people have no knowledge, no qualifications, nothing. They're just there to make money, to be famous, to whatever, to feel good about themselves that they have 10,000 followers. And I'm watching this guy live his life and I think he's some sort of role model and I'm, I let this guy influence me and, and talk to me. Or this song that is absolutely filthy. Absolutely filthy. Why am I listening to this? Why am I eating this absolute rotten fruit, absolute rotten food when no one's forcing me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to this? I'm choosing to do this? The soul is the very best thing that Allah has given us. And we are so privileged. You know, people say, why did Allah create me? I didn't ask to be created. I got created in all these rules. So many rules I have to follow. Why? I would just, why, why was I, I? I didn't ask. I didn't sign the contract. Number one, existence. The fact that you get to enjoy this world with your soul. That happiness that you feel. The things that you enjoy in this world. You would never give that up. You would never give that up, right? People will do anything. I meet 
and people, I had a patient today, he's 88. He's 88, the poor guy is like, and, he, and he's angry that the doctor says, I'm not going to give you chemotherapy for your cancer. He's enjoying life. He's enjoying life. He doesn't want to die because life is incredible. We have so many blessings that we don't even appreciate. And Allah's given us this and we say, Allah, why? Why did you create me if there were going to be rules? And the second thing is we all ma did make that contract. You know, we spoke about this world of before we, oh, not sorry, that was somewhere else that we spoke about it. But we all know that before we came to this world, Allah asked all of us. He took a covenant from us that am I not your Lord? And we all accepted. It's the, it lies very, very deep within us. We might not be aware of it, but it's there at the very depths of my existence. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Okay, so the first thing to take, if I want to take care of myself, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا The first thing I need to do is to protect it from things that are going to harm it. So, you know, like just like when you go to the doctor and they say that, you know, your cholesterol is very high, your sugar's a bit borderline, your blood pressure, be careful, right? This is for the older, older people, maybe, um, or for, you know, and you say, what do I do, right? Now, most people, they want to take something, you know, give me a special vitamin, give me some herb that's going to fix it. And we always go back and tell them, no, it's not what you put in, it's what you leave out. That is much more important. You know, don't smoke. If you smoke, you can go and do all the exercise that you want, you can eat, you know, you can, you can go and take all these amazing herbs and vitamins and whatever, but you're smoking. If you drink alcohol, you can do all these amazing other things and whatever, but, but you're drinking alcohol. If you drink poison and the doctor comes and gives you the, the most advanced, best chemo, whatever drug that's out at the moment, medicine, and gives it to you, it's not going to help because you just drank poison. The most important thing is not, sometimes is what I leave out, what I protect myself from, even more than what I put in. This is very, very important. So protecting ourselves, the Imams give us this example, you know, they say sometimes you're building a house, you're working really hard, you're building, you know, you, you, you're trying to improve yourself spiritually, you're praying maybe on time now, or you're maybe doing a couple of mustahabbat, you're whatever, whatever, you're attending majalis, you're maybe, I don't know, whatever it is that you're doing. And then he, the Imam says, but then you go back and you get an axe and you smash up whatever you built. And then the next day you go back and you start building again. If someone does that, you say, this person is crazy. But when we sin, this is what we do. Whatever we built, I attended the majlis, I, I learned, I paid attention during the lecture, I cried for Imam Hussein, and then I went outside and I started backbiting. Or I went outside and someone sent me a video on my phone and I knew it was inappropriate and I watched it. What was the point? You just took an axe and you smashed all that hard work that you just did. What I leave out is sometimes much more important. So, and there are some sins that are very destructive. They're very destructive. They just eat you up from inside. They eat us up from inside. You know that some of the hadiths speak about them. They say like jealousy. You know, if you act on jealousy, the, the Prophet ﷺ says, look, when you do tasbih, there are like palm trees being planted for you in Jannah. And then they say, what, what if I say it a thousand times? He goes, a thousand palm trees. They say, why, Ya Rasul, alhamdulillah, we're set. And he says, but be careful, don't burn them. How do we burn them? Jealousy, anger, backbiting, and other sins that are, you know, these days are very difficult. Like, you know, they, they just come at you from everywhere. We have to be careful with these things. So we, when we speak about the soul, what the Imams teach us and what the Holy Quran teaches us is that one of the things that corrupts our soul, that really blackens my soul and dirties it, is these sins. Right? So Imam Sadiq says that when you commit a sin, a spot appears on your heart. You go and repent, the spot is erased. Okay? And then a person sins again and the spot gets bigger until it just covers the entire heart. If we continue to sin, it will get to a point where my heart and my soul is so black, I won't even know what's wrong or right anymore. So I need to repent. Repent and stay away from that sin, which we're going to talk about, inshallah. Another thing that happens when I sin 
is that sometimes I'm making a dua for something. You know, I want to progress in my life and I'm making dua. Ya Allah, I really want to get married. Ya Allah, I really want to get improved financially. I, I want to, I don't know, gain Islamic knowledge. I want to, I don't know, become, um, you know, get a PhD in this field or I want to become the best tradesman in my business. And Imam Baqar alayhi salam says, all of the, you know, while this is happening and you're doing your dua, there's stuff happening in the unseen realm. Allah is, is speaking to the angels and he says that my will is flexible on this. I either give it to him now or I give it to him later. I give it to her now or I give it to her later. And the dua can bring this forward, right? But then we commit a sin. And Allah says, because of that sin, I'm going to delay it. This person has made themselves deserving to be deprived of my mercy. And then this makes things harder again for us, right? Because that thing that I wanted has just been delayed. Calamities, we spoke about tests and trials, and this is part of life. But one of the reasons that happens for some types of trials is my sin. So most, except for the masumin, almost all of the trials that we face in our life, are many, many of them, if not most, are because of sins that we've committed. So if we can avoid sin, not only am I keeping my soul clean, but I'm going to get my hajat, and I am going to, inshallah, be protected from many of the calamities that I might. There'll still be tests and trials, but there'll be different types of tests and trials. Things that I maybe I can bear more easily and better. And our sins hold us captive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. Your soul on the day of judgment and even in this world is being held captive by our sins. I want to move forward, I can't. I'm in jail. Because of the sins that I have committed. So sins are really destructive to our soul. So inshallah, if we leave tonight with nothing else other than to please, for the sake of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, the reason we come to these majalis is that I leave after the ten nights and I have cut out a sin from my life. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So if I've been darkening my soul if I've been dirtying it and corrupting it with sins how do I clean it repentance well, I gave a similar talk a couple of years ago and I didn't talk about repentance and I got in trouble with Liat so this year I made sure it's included so regret is repentance Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and nadamu tawbah once you understand this is a sin and you regret it this is the first step of repentance and it can also be the last step so for example, I've been watching something that I'm not supposed to watch. I know this is very bad for my soul. I feel very guilty after this. My friends might be talking about it. They might be sending me the video or I don't know, something. I watched it once and now I can't stop. But I know afterwards that this, is, this makes me feel horrible. I know this is bad. I know I have to stop. And then, inshallah, tonight I make the intention, this is so disgusting. I'm never going to go back to it. And I really regret doing this. This is the first step of repentance and it can also be the last because this regret can be so great that, I, that it hurts so much that I would never ever ever even consider going back to that sin. Like the magicians that they sinned against Allah for the whole life. But when they saw the miracle of Prophet Musa, that was it. That was it. They were never going to go back to their sin ever no matter what happened. But I was like, I'm going to literally chop an arm and a leg off and cast you onto a tree to bleed to death. They said, Aqdima an taqal. Do whatever you want. We're not going back to the things that you used to make us do. So that regret, if it's strong enough, that's it. It's the beginning and the end of repentance. Now, at least it's the first step. I regret what I did. Because, you know, sometimes we go so far down the track, we don't even regret what we did. But regret is the first step. And the second is I make a firm intention not to go back to this sin. So Imam Sajjad alayhi salam dua tawbah, he says that, Ya Allah, I'm doing a tawbah, a tawbah of someone who is not talking to himself about ever sinning again. And that he's not going to go back to any kind of, you know, this mistake that he's repenting from. Ya Allah, I'm giving you my guarantee tonight that I'm not going to go back to that thing that you don't want me to do. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And if we really regret what we did and we make a firm intention never to go back to it and we stick to that, inshallah, then inshallah we don't have to worry. You know, inshallah, 
for the rest of my life, if I was making a mistake up until the age of 17, 18, 20, 25, 40, whatever it was, if I truly regret and I make a firm intention never to go back to this sin and I don't, then Allah says, look, once you repent, I am all forgiving and all merciful. I will tell on the, even your limbs, you know, these limbs, these arms, these eyes that give, that do shahada against us on the day of judgment. We stand in front of Allah and our eyes say, this is what you did. And our hands say, this is what you did. Allah says, you know, I even tell them not to say anything. That piece of earth that you sinned on, that will testify against you on the day of judgment, I will tell it also to be quiet. And even the angels, these two angels on my left and right. Whatever we say, by the way, these two angels are writing. Whatever we do, whatever we think even. But if we truly repent, Allah even makes them forget what we did. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So what I keep out is really important. And what I want to keep out is all sorts of sins. Sins of what I see, what I hear, what I touch, what I, what I speak, all of these things. Okay? And the next part is to then try and develop my soul. This is now what I put in, the effort that I put in. Okay? So, the only thing I'm going to talk about tonight from all of this is salah. Because this really, it is the absolute most important thing when it comes to developing my, other than avoiding sins, which is what I leave out, what I put in is salah. It's incredible what the Quran and the Hadith say about it. We need like a whole 10 night series just on that. But inshallah in the next whatever time that we have, let's talk about salah. So, we talked about sins and how they dirty our soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, sorry, uh, you know, the Imam Sadiq alayhi salam quotes from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that imagine there was like a river outside your house. He's giving you a physical metaphor. Imagine that you go out and work in the field and you come back and you're sweaty and muddy and whatever and you have a river, a stream outside your house and it's pure and clean and it's, you know, and you, you wash yourself in it five times a day. Are you going to be dirty at the end of that day? No, you won't. So one of the things that Salah does is some of that blackness, some of that rust, some of that dirt that's built up, on, built up on my soul because I'm sinning and I haven't fully repented yet, it washes that away. It makes it easier for me to repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That Salah, it stops you from doing fahsha, really bad sins, and munkar, right? Things that are hateful. So there was a boy who used to come and pray with the Prophet ﷺ. He was a young man. He would come and pray jama'ah every day with the Prophet in Masjid al-Nabi. But then he'd go out in the streets of Medina and he'd do really bad things. And people would come and complain to the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, he comes and prays behind you, but then look at what he does. And the Prophet would say, give him some time. His salah will stop him from this. And eventually this boy repented from all of these sins because of his salah. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says that salah is like the amud, it's like the pillar of the religion. He's, imagine you're in a tent, and there's, it's a big tent, right? And yet usually the big tent has this pole in the middle that keeps everything in place. All of the other ropes and all of the other pegs, they only can stay in place once you've put that middle pole in to hold the weight of the tent. The imam says that's what your salah is like. If this pole that is upright in the middle, the pillar of the tent, if it bends, so your salah is like weak, or it breaks, you've stopped praying altogether, then neither the pegs or the ropes are going to be able to hold your tent straight anymore. It's all going to fall in on us. Whatever is going on in my life, the one thing that I should never, ever, ever stop or consider stopping is salah. Ever. It's like the final link even if I'm making other mistakes in my life, if I, if as long as I am praying, I'm giving myself a chance to come back. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So two important things with our salah. One is time. Okay, praying on time. So we have the fadila time, which is like at least say within an hour of the adhan, right? And we have the time before qada. As long as, inshallah, we try our very best to pray within the fadila time. And definitely don't let it become qada without a reason. It's very important. You might think, why? I can't concentrate. 
I need, I'd rather go home and shower and be clean and be ready and be in a room alone and quiet. No, that's not what Allah asked from you. Allah asked to pray on time. Kitaban mawquta, a timed obligation. Imam Khomeini rahmatullah one day he is doing this big press conference and the world media is there to speak to him, you know, about what's happening in Iran and the revolution and it's about to happen. And he, he finishes his speech and then they ask him a few questions and then as they're asking questions he says, sorry, I have to go. And his, the other people with him are like, what do you mean? This is, this is our chance to speak about our cause, media, the whole world is watching. He says, no. It's Salah time. It's Adhan time. I'm going to pray. The other thing about our Salah is to pay attention to our Salah. Now this is a whole other thing and it's you know very difficult to pay attention to all of our Salah. But just remember that the part of our Salah that's truly, truly accepted is the part that we pay attention to. And what I mean by that is that while you're praying, you're thinking about something to do with Allah. And one of the best things to think about when you're praying is to stop sinning. One of the ways that Salah stops me from sinning is that I get up to pray, I do my wudu, and I feel clean spiritually, physically. I stand on my sajada, which again, you know, is nice and clean. I put my turba, and it, maybe it's the turba of Imam Hussein, and I start speaking to Allah, and then I think, what am I doing? What am I doing? An hour ago, look what I was doing, and now I have the audacity to stand in front of Allah and speak to Him and pray. And because I know I have to pray, because we just said, you, no matter what, you never ever stop praying, no matter how bad the sin is, then eventually you're going to stop that sin. It's very powerful. If we just understand that when I stand, you know, when I stand to pray in front of Allah, SWT, there's supposed to be a war going on inside me between those things that are tempting me to sin and those things that are pulling me up towards Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Running out of time. Um, the last thing I'll say is that when we pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembering us. Allah's remembrance of people who pray is greater and superior to, to their remembrance of Him. If you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're standing to pray, you pray on time and you pray with attention and you give it its due respect, Allah is remembering you somewhere much better. He's sitting with the angels. And they're writing your destiny and what's going to happen to you. And he's remembering you in a way that is much, much better than what you are remembering him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that especially when you do sujood in your salah, if a praying person knew to what extent they were surrounded by his mercy, they would never raise their head from the state of sujood. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight by the right of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, to allow us to give salah its due right. Because the two main things that we really want to progress ourselves spiritually is to avoid sin, to protect my soul from the poison and corruption of sin, and to elevate it and purify it through salah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when we do the ziyarah of Imam Hussein, we always say this phrase, Ashhadu annaka qad aqamta salat. I testify that definitely, surely you established salah. Not just prayed, but you established Salah. And even on the day of Ashura, the time for Dhuhr comes, and one of the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Abu Tamam, I think it's pronounced, comes to the Imam and he says, Ya Aba Abdullah, may my soul be sacrificed for you. These people have come close to you now. Ha'ula iqtarabu mink. The army of Umar ibn Sa'ad, the army of Yazid is coming closer and closer to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And then he says to the Imam, La wallah, la tuqtal hatta uqtala dunak. My Imam, there's no way you're going to die unless I die before you. And then look at this beautiful. This is why the companions of Imam Hussein were the best companions that any prophet and any Imam ever had. You know, in Safin, a person comes and asks Imam Ali about the salah. And, the, and then one of the companions of the Imam says, this is not the time for Salah, look at this fierce battle that we're fighting. And then the Imam Ali says, if it's not for Salah, then what are we fighting for? Whereas the companions of Imam Hussein, they come and tell him about Salah. I want to meet Allah after I've prayed one last prayer with you, Ya Imam. And the Imam alayhi salam looks at the sky 
and he sees that the sun is just about to come down from its highest peak and he says you remembered salah may Allah make you from those who are of those who pray frequently and remember frequently yes this is the first the beginning of the time for salah let's pray and then the Imam says to Zuhair ibn al-Qeen and to Sa'id ibn Abdullah that stand in front of me while I pray Salatul Dhuhr. And Sa'id ibn Abdullah stands, imagine how difficult this would be, Ya Allah. He stands in front of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his job is to be like the shield for Imam Hussein. فَجَعَلُوا يَرْمُونَهُ بِالنِّبَالِ كُلَّمَا أَخَذَ الْحُسَيْنَ أَخَذَ الْحُسَيْنُ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا قَامَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ فَمَا زَالَ يُرْمَى إِلَيْهِ حَتَّى سَقَطَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ If an arrow comes from Imam Hussein's right, he would turn his body to the right. And the arrow would strike the body of Sa'id ibn Abdullah, the shaheed of Salah. And if the arrow comes from the left, he would turn to the left and the arrow would strike his body from the left. Until he is, he is wounded with so many arrows. And he falls to the ground and he says, Allahumma l'anhum la'na'adin wa thamud. Allahumma ablig nabiyika anis salam. Ya Allah, send my salutations to your Prophet. And tell him, tell him how much pain I just endured from these arrows and these wounds. What did I want from this? To help the progeny of Rasulullah. And then Sa'id passes away. Tonight is Laylatul Jum'ah. We want to send our hearts to Karbala. أمان من النار لزوار الحسين ليلة الجمعة. A guarantee of safety from the hellfire to those who visit Imam Hussein on ليلة الجمعة. Send your hearts to Karbala tonight. Karbala must be full. Every Thursday night, Karbala is full, but tonight is ليلة الجمعة and ليلة عاشوراء. Can you imagine? Send your heart to Karbala. فامشي الهوينا قاصد القبب التي تتهافت الأملاك في أعتابها. Walk purposefully towards these domes that the angels come and go from. وجهد بنفسك أن تفوز بلثمة منها فيا طوبى لمن يحظى بها. Struggle to kiss the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. For how lucky is the one who gets to do this. وَإِذَا دَنَوْتَ مِنَ الضَّرِيحِ فَقِفْ وَلَا And when you come close to the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, then make sure you stop and stand there. وَلَا تَحْبِسْ دُمُوعَكَ فَهُوَ وَقْتُ صَبَابِهَا don't hold back with your tears because this is the time to let your tears go. وقل السلام عليك يا ابن المصطفى هذه الورا لمعاشها ومآبها peace be upon you O son of al Mustafa يا ابن الوصي المرتضى علم الهدى تبيان طرق ظلالها وصوابها peace be upon you the son of Imam Ali al Murtada send your salam to Imam Hussein. يا سيد الشهداء يا من رزقه عم الورى طرا عدا نصابها ثم ثم القبر الشريف فإنه then kiss the grave of Imam Hussein من شأن أملاك السماء ودأبها because this is what the angels come from heaven to do they come to kiss the grave of Hussein عليه السلام
واقفض علي بن الحسين مسلما وبقية الشهداء من أطيابها then turn your attention to علي بن الحسين tonight is the night of علي الأكبر send your peace and greetings to علي الأكبر and the rest of the شهداء and then as the final stanza the poet says وَعَذِلْ بِقَصْدِكَ لَا تَمُرُّ بِبُقْعَةٍ he says there's one place be careful, there's one place that maybe you don't want to go to. There is a place near the shrine of Imam Hussein which is called Al Manhar. <laughs> the grave of Imam Hussein, the shrine is where his body is, but there is a place. This is the place where his neck was severed. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't go near that place where the Imam was slaughtered by that cursed Mal'ud. Inni akhafu alayka an tamurra biha. Why? Why should I not go past? I'm afraid that you will go past it. Allah tuwafiha hukuqa musabiha. Because you may not be able to do justice to the right of this tragedy. Ya Allah, bless us with the ziyara of Imam Hussain. Count us and write us as those who visited Imam Hussein tonight. Tonight is the night of Ali al-Akbar, the son of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the one who looked and whose character was so much like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He asked his father, he is the first to go from the Ahlul Bayt to fight the enemy and as he goes out, Imam Hussein says, Allahumma ashhad ala haula, faqad baraza ilayhim ashbahu nasi bi rasulika Muhammad, khalqan wa khuluqan wa mantiqa. Ya Allah, look at these people. This person is the most alike to the Prophet in his akhlaq, in the way he looks, in the way he speaks. When we miss the Prophet, we would look at him and look at these people who call themselves the community of the Prophet. And they are about to slaughter this boy. Ali al-Akbar goes out to fight. He was a brave warrior. He fights many of them. He kills many. He wounds many. But then he becomes so thirsty in the heat of Karbala. With no water, he comes back to his father. Ya abati al-Atash qad qatalani. My father, imagine you're a father. Imagine you're a father and your son comes to you and says, Father, the thirst is killing me. But you have no water to give him. Is there anywhere that you can give me some water to drink? The Imam has nothing for him. He says, Qatil Qalilan, go back and fight a little more. Because very soon, Fama Asra Amat al Qajadika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Soon you will meet with your great grandfather Rasulullah. For you speak a bikatsil awfa shirbatala tadma ubadaha. He will give you to drink from his cup. And you will never again be thirsty. He, he, he farewells his father one more time, knowing that this is going to be the last time. He goes back, he goes back to fight. Ana Ali ibn al-Husayn ibn Ali. Nahnu wa baytullahi awla bin Nabi. He goes out to fight again until one of the mala'een comes and he strikes Ali al-Akbar. But here is what happens. This is what happens. The horse takes Ali al-Akbar towards the enemies and they cut his body into pieces. <laughs> he falls to the ground. Ya Abata, my father. Hada jaddi Rasulullah. This is my grandfather Rasulullah and he has given me that drink. And he says, hurry to us, for there is a drink ready for you, Ya Hussein. Then his soul escapes from his body. The Imam السلام, comes to him and he says, Ala dunya, ala dunya, And he takes him, he takes him along with the rest of the Hashemiyin back to his tent. 
they place him in the tent, and then who comes into the tent? Ya Allah, Zainab, فخرجت Zainab wa ma'an niswa. يندبنا علي الأكبر وزينب تنادي يا حبيبة وعيد الله بد علي الأكبر <تصفيق> Sometimes the bond between an aunt and her nephew but what a nephew علي الأكبر ويا ابن أخاه the son of my brother she throws herself upon him فجاء الحسين فأخذ بيدها وردها إلى الفسطات ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين سيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون ما صراعك خيبني والدهر شيبني ما صراعك خيبني والدهر شيبني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني مصرعك مصرعك خيب والدهر شيبني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني مصرعك مصرعك يا ابني والدهر شيبني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي آي ابني آي ابني يا ابني الأكبر من ريحة للحرب تمضي وتطلع ودعتك وصوت خمد ما يحكي غير المدمع ما يحكي غير المدمع شلت يدي للبار وصيحت يا ربي قلبي تصدع يا ريت مثل يوسف ريدت ظنوت الأكبر يرجع ظنوت الأكبر جاع الباري حقق ظني فاقدك يألمني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي مصرعك مصرعك خيب والدهر شيب مصرعك مصرعك والدهر والدهر آي ابني 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 بارينا حقق دعوتي ورجعت من ميدانك شفتك بآمال الناصر متوجه لصيوانك متوجه لصيوانك نا 
نار الحروب نار الحزن ما غير الوانك لا تنشف الجمر العطش يتناثر من لسانك يتناثر يتناثر من لسانك هل جامور الهبني هل جامور الهبني على بعد ذوبني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني مصرعك مصرعك والدهار مصرعك مصرعك والدهر شيبني آي ابني 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 آخر ودعت ودعت وياي واشتد همي للحروب يا ابني من ريحت هدمت حالي وعزمي هدمت حالي وعزمي مرة يصور لي الأمل مرة يصور لي الأمل ترجع وأشوفك يمي مرة يصور لي الحزن جسمك صارع ومرمي جسمك صارع جسمك صارع هل امل عذبني والحزن صوبني هل امل عذبني والحزن صوبني آي ابني آي ابني مصرعك مصرعك والدهار والدهار شي ابني مصرعك يا ابني والدهار يا ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني انت بغمار المعركة تتبارز ويا العسكر وانا حزين بخيمتي منك خبر اتنطر منك خبر اتنطر ما شفت لن فزعة زلم ما شفت لن فزعة زلم وسمعت صوت الخدار صاحن يا ليل اشهل صاحن يا ليل اشهل خبر بالحومة طاح الاكبر بالحومة طاح 
بالحومة طاح بالحومة طاح له الخبر دهني والهضم صدعني آية ابني آية آية ابني آية ابني مصرعك 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 خيب والدهر هاي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني آي آي ابني آي ابني آي ابني يا ولدي من صوب الحارب للخيام شالوا جسمك للخيام شالوا جسمك تعنتك بكسرة قالوب أجر المدامع يمك أجر المدامع يمك يم جسمك حنيت الضلع ومزاج الدمع ودمك ومزاج الدمع ودمك ناديتك بصوت الهضم أمك تراني أمك أمك تراني أم عيدها أمك ترى أمك 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 ترى منظرك يفجعني بغربتي تضيعني وآي ابني آي ابني آي ابني مصرعك مصرعك والدهر مأجورين مأجورين إن شاء الله تحضروا حضروا صفوفكم وتحضروا القصيدة شباب <تصفيق> يا حبيبي يا حسين نور عيني يا حسين يا حبيبي يا حبيبي ارفع على إيدك كلكم والنسوية أنا لا أنسى الحسين وهو دام ودجال يا حبيبي يا حبيبي يا حسين أنا لا أنسى هذا الحبل لا تنفصل بهذا الحبل لا تنفصل انزل وارفع لي ايدك بارك الله بكم بهذا ال 
الحبل لا تنفصل بابن الواصي دوم اتصل خلي يدك بدي حسين بالك تهد شفينا بالك بالك ايه هديني يا لو هديني يا لو رخت حابل هتخدعك من تمشي وياها بعد شي رجعك بس الحسن ابن الزكي ينفعك بس الحسن ابن الزكي بابن الوالي ما تنويلي ما تنهزم دومي وعالي يوقف لك بوقت الضيج والواد مجاربينا والواد مجاربينا هالدنيا خلصانة ترى تعرف زين ربك نطقلنا عمر مو عمري شمحلاها من تقضيها خام لحسين شمحلاها شمحلاها تقضيها خام ثقل شوية كل من نذر روح انتصر ويا السبط لا ما خسر بيوم الحشر ما ينساه يوقف الى ويعينا يوقف الى يوقف لحسين ظل خادم ابد ما تخسر وقسم الى داعت علي الاكبر اخدم سبط ابن النبي للمحشر بس فزعيت وين ضريت يوم الحشر وبصايت عند بداخي لك يا حسين ما غير لي نجينا ما غير ما غير يوسف هاني الأسدي شعرها بيوم الشدة يوقف إليك بس انخا يقضيه نب لمح البصر ثق بالله ابن الواصي كل من خدم ينطيجا ينطيق إليك فد ما نزيله والوادم تجي تقبله والخادم يظل الموت ثوب الشرف من طينا ثوب الشرف ثوب الشرف من طينا يا الخادم سبط النبي وقال البيت 
هاكستمع من الناس حوياريت لا تعلى على وادم إذا يوم عليت هذا الزمن وكت الفتن يلي تنتسب لام الحسن لا تستغي بالخدام وتهدم البانينا وتهدم اقسم عليكم بالنبي والانزاع يا شيعة بس هاي الخدا ما تشفع بيوم الذي به الولد ما ينفع خل نستعد خل نبتعد يا محيدارة كلها ترد رحمة لون حامل جار بدال اعتاب علينا بدال اعتاب بيت الدعاء اقسم عليكم بالنبي والانزاع يا شيعة بس هاي الخدامة تشفع بيوم الذي به الولد ما ينفع خل نستعد خل نبتعد يم حيدارة كلها ترد رحمة لون حامل جار بدال اعتاب علينا بدال بدال يا الخادم سبط النبي وقال البيت هاك استمع من النصيحة ويا ريت لا تعلى على وادم إذا يوم عليت هذا الزمن وكت الفتن يلي تنتسب لام الحسن لا تستغي بالخدام وتهدم البانينا وتهدم حضروا لنا يا شباب كنا حظي ان شاء الله وجابوا وياي ها عليهم يا عمي ها عليهم صاحبهم الاكبر صاحبهم ها عليهم ها عليهم صاحبهم الاكبر صاحبهم ها عليهم ها عليهم يا صاحبهم صاحبهم يا حيدر هل تنخد شمرت ذرعانها شد وسروج الاصايل من لواء بعنانها هل هلت لها المعا قامت بتربانها انطوت مزوية عجاج وغوشت فرسانها كل أراضي كربلة تصيح بهم يا هلا كل أراضي كربلة تصيح بهم يا هلا ها عليهم يا عم ها عليهم هو هذا جوابك أعلى أعلى ها عليهم يا عم ها عليهم صاحبهم اليوث حيدر هل تنخت شمرت ذرعانها شد وسروج الاصايل من لواء بعنانها هل هلت لها المعا قامت بتربانها انطوت مزوية عجاج وغوشت فرسانها كل اراضي كربلة تصيح بهم يا هلا كل اراضي كربلة تصيح ها عليهم يا عمي ها عليهم صاحبهم صاحبهم لك صاحبهم ها عليهم صاحبهم يا عمي ها عليهم صاحبهم يا 
ليلة الوحشة بخزرته الجفيل جلجلت صار والقاع شلفاها حدر جد ما تزلزلت زود من سيف ابو فاضل زود من الدم شلت يا لي ثار الظلع صاح بزود سيف ترتلت شارب رف بغضب راد يقلبهم قلب شارب برف بغضب راد يقلبها قلب ها عليهم يا عم ها عليهم صاحبهم لك ها عليهم صاحبهم يا اكبر صاحبهم ايه ليلة الوحشة بخزرته الجفيل تشلجلت صار ولقى شلفاها حدر جد ما تزلزلت زود من سيف ابو فاضل زود من الدم شلت يا لي ثار الظلع صاح بزود سيف ترتلت شارب رف بغضب راد يقلبها قلب شارب رف بغضب راد يقلبها قلب ها عليهم يا عم صاحبهم ها عليهم يا عمي ها عليهم صاحبهم يا الاكبر صاحبهم ايه بيوم طبوا للمعارب غير غيم مدخني صاح وذبايح نمد القوم قدام الحسين صاح ذبايح تمد القوم قدام الحسين استفتحوا ذر الصواب رد لو فتح المبين علي الأكبر على اليسرى وأبو فاضل على اليمين يا علي الأكبر عيدها عيدها بعد مرة بعد مرة علي الأكبر هي مثل حمزة وحيدارة علي وسبع القنطرة مثل حمزة وحيدارة علي سبع القنطرة ها عليهم خادم خادم عليهم يا عمي ها عليهم صاحبهم يا الاكبر صاحبهم ايه بيوم طبوا للمعارب غير غيم مدخني صاح وذبايح نبد القوم قدام الحسين استفتحوا ذر الصوار مرتل او فتح المبين علي الاكبر على اليسرى اي علي الاكبر على اليسرى مثل حمزه وحيدره علي وسبع القنطره مثل حمزه وحيدره علي وسبع القنطره ها عليهم ضجة الروس الملاحم ضاقت ترور الزلم طفحة حلوق المنايا سيوفهم تلهم لهب للهزيمة ماكو منفى لا حصل درب الهزم علي الأكبر شد عليهم طشار بعزم الزلم عيد يوم الزمجرة مثل حملة حيدرة عيد يوم الزمجرة مثل حمزة وحيدرة ها عليهم يا عم صاحبهم لك ها عليهم صاحبهم ظلت بعجها الحريبة والشمس جنها اختفت علي الأكبر من اليسرى وسطة الحومة شفت لأنها ضربات الغضنفة علي هناك تشاقفت من شقف سيفة عجب شاف عما ملتفت طقا والظهر بظهر علي الأكبر والقمر طقا والظهر بظهر علي الأكبر والقمر ها عليهم يا عم ها عليهم صاحبهم ها عليهم بيوم طبوا للمعار غير غيم مدخني حيدار يا 
بيوم طبا وليل ما عار بغير غيم مدخنين صاحة وذبايح تمد القوم قدام الحسن استفتحوا ذر